Hey guys, welcome back to another Mansion 4 tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to show the FPS in your game on the screen. So there is a very simple way of doing this. You can just use an execute console command. However, obviously that's using a console command and print strings, both of which don't work in a published game. So I'm going to be showing you how to do it in a packaged game like so. So let me hit play and I'll show you what it's going to look like. So you can see if I hit play here, up in the top right, we have our FPS. So it's just going up and down as mine's obviously fluctuating staying at around 100, 120, stuff like that. So this is our FPS in game like so. And I'll also show you that it is working. So I'm just gonna enable a lag switch, which I've created. So I just enable that so I can see it. If I press K, it's gonna enable a lag switch, meaning it's just gonna spawn in a lot of AIs. So it will lag the game. I'm just doing that just to show you that it is actually our FPS. It's not just a random number. So this does work if our FPS changed as well. So if I hit K, I'm gonna get a lot of AIs spawning in here. You can see in the top left, our AI number is going up quite a lot, and the top right, our FPS is going down quite a lot. As I go further away from them and don't look at them, the FPS goes up, so it's around 40, around 50. If I look at them, go towards them, it drops all the way down to just 20 and just below. And now we'll get all the way up, it's around 13. So this is what we're going to do today. Obviously, I won't be doing the lag switch. That's just to test it and show it working. So we're going to be making this today with the FPS on screen. So let me delete this code, and I'll show you how I've done this. So this is actually a very simple process. So what we're going to do first is we're going to create a widget for this. So you can put this in a widget you've already created, but I'm going to make a new one. So I'm going to right click, go to user interface, get a widget blueprint, and I'm just going to name this one FPS widget like so, and open it up straight away. In here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some text in the top right hand corner. This can be wherever you want. It doesn't have to be the top right. It can be the top left, whichever one you'd prefer. So I'm going to anchor it to the top right as well. And I'm going to align it to the right as well. So the text stays on the right. So it's not going to keep going off screen. Obviously, if it's in the left, you can assign it to the left by keeping it as default. So that isn't essential. It just makes it look a lot nicer and your FPS can sometimes go off screen like so. So this is just going to be a lot better. And then all we're going to do now is under content where we have text, we hit bind, create binding. I'll move the return node out a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit a plus variable here to get that. I'm going to name this one FPS. I'm going to change this to be an integer. You can have this as a float if you want a decimal value, so if you want 100.26, but I don't want that, so I'm gonna make it an integer. So to just get rid of the decimals, I'll make it an integer. Again, if you want a float, keep it as a float. We'll get the FPS there, like so. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come at the return value of the return node. I'm gonna get a format text. In the format here, I'm gonna write FPS colon space. I want these open brackets here. I'll put a picture on screen now of which ones I mean. I'm gonna write FPS close brackets. If we hit enter, you can see we have the FPS there. So what this is going to do is it's going to print the text FPS and then here we can input what we want. So I might change this to FPS input. So you can see that's different. So what it's going to do is it's going to print FPS colon space and then FPS input here, which we're going to put as this integer there. So what it's going to do is read this integer and put that into a text saying FPS space and then our FPS value and put that on screen. So now we need to get the FPS as well. So we're going to go to the event graph of this widget, delete pre-construct and event construct. We're going off of event tick. I want to slow this down a bit. So off of event tick, obviously it's going to be doing it very quickly. We're doing it every single frame. As that's why we're doing tick is it's every frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold down D, left click to get a delay, setting this to 0.05. So it's still very quick, but it's not as quick. So it just makes it easier for the player to read it. And then out of the completed, I'm going to set FPS like so. And to get the FPS, like I said, the event tick does something every frame. So the event tick already is our frame rate as it's doing it every frame. So if you've got 60 FPS, it fires this off 60 times a second. So to get it every second, what we're going to do is the in delta time, we're going to get a float divided by a float, plug it into the bottom value and having the top value as one, as we want it for one second. And then out of the return value of that, we're going to get a truncate to make it an integer. If you've kept the FPS as a float, you don't need to do that and then plug that into the set FPS there. And now this is going to get our frame rate every 0.05 seconds. We can compile, save, and that is it done. It is really that simple of how to get the FPS in game. So now we just need to put this on screen. So I'm going to minimize this, go to the level blueprint. So blueprints, open level blueprint. And you see this is where I have the lag switch here. You obviously don't need that. And then up here, I'm going to right click and get event begin play. Out of this, I'm going to create widget with the class as my FPS widget there. Return value, I'll just add to viewport, like so. Now if I compile, save, this should work perfectly. So I can minimize this, 
hit play to test it, we have an FPS in the top right corner there. And it's still again staying just above 100, between 100 and 120, like so. So the FPS is working perfectly for us. And again, if I enable the lag switch, actually I don't need to put the AI amount on screen, if I just press K, it's going to enable the lag switch there. Many are spawning every single second. The FPS has dropped all the way down to 30 now. If I go over here, it's 60, 70. If I go back over here, it's about 30. So this works perfectly for us. So again, you can just use the execute console command, but that won't work in a packaged game. The player won't be able to see it. So again, this way works perfectly for us. So I think that'll be it for this video, so we've done everything we want to do. We've created it so we can just display the player's FPS on screen, and this works perfectly, so when the FPS does change, the value changes as well, so it'll work for every single player and their actual FPS in game. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful, and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.